Hey lifers, Dustin here, and the SEC has just released the entire 2018 football schedule for all 14 of their member schools, so I figured in this video we would do a little bit of an interesting kind of quick glance over what the schedules look like for all the schools and kind of talk about it a little bit. Now we already knew who the conference teams these schools were playing. We also knew roughly their non-conference schedule if you paid attention to specific schools. You probably already know who they were going to play out of conference, but now we have the official dates and arrangements and who plays who when and that we can look at the streaks. So I just want to take a quick glance over all of these teams, starting with the SEC East. So if you look at Florida's schedule, they start at home against Charleston Southern. They will try to get their 20th in a row against the Kentucky Wildcats at the Swamp. Then they will host McIlwain's old team, Colorado State before traveling three times in the next four weeks on the road. So at Tennessee, at Miss State, which will be interesting, the uh, Dan Mullen's old team. Home against LSU and then at Vanderbilt. Uh, so all three true SEC road games they have will be in the four weeks before their bye week. Then they get Georgia, play Missouri and South Carolina at home. Then they will play Idaho, which now will be an FCS team Technically, it'll be an FCS game since they're dropping down next year. And they'll be Florida's second FCS school of the year after playing Charleston Southern. And then they have the annual trip to Tallahassee or the annual matchup against Florida State, this time traveling to Tallahassee. If we take a look at Georgia's, they open up against Austin P. Then they travel to South Carolina, which is never easy. Play host to Middle Tennessee, travel to Missouri. Then they host Tennessee and Vanderbilt back-to-back -back weeks before traveling to LSU, which is a really tough draw from the West. If you're going to have a team and you're going to have to play uh, an away game at LSU, is probably not the one you would pick. Then they get a bye week. I really like the bye week. They, uh, they come off the trip to LSU, have a bye. Then they get to go to Florida or to play Florida in Jacksonville, travel for their last road game of the year at Kentucky. Then they get home games against Auburn and Deep South's oldest rivalry, UMass, and then against Georgia Tech, and good, clean, old-fashioned hate. Kentucky opens up at home against Central Michigan, then they travel to Florida, come home against Murray State, and then against Mississippi State, and then they get a home game against South Carolina, try to make it five in a row against the Gamecocks, then they travel out to Texas to play the Aggies, they get a bye week. Now, I love bye weeks in the middle of the season, I think that is the perfect time to have a bye week. Uh, you want six games, a bye, and then six games. It is just strategically very good. But it will be very interesting because it'll come off the Texas A&M game. They will have to revamp against what is traditionally considered two of the lower-tiered SEC East teams in Vanderbilt and then out to Missouri before playing Georgia and Tennessee. So I, I do believe with Kentucky's schedule... The, those first four SEC games, Florida, Miss State, South Carolina, AM will define the season. But how they rebound after the bye week against Vanderbilt, Missouri, could also show us a whole lot. Then they host Middle Tennessee and travel to Louisville. Missouri opens the season against UT Martin and Wyoming. Travels out to Purdue, which suddenly is expected to be kind of an offensive onslaught. Uh, this year wasn't as much, at least not from Missouri's end. But with the way Missouri's offense can be, who knows, by next year, then they host Georgia, get a pretty early bye week, and then travel out to South Carolina and then out to Alabama. Those two games back-to-back -back are borderline unfair against the Tigers. Uh, not only do you not ever really want to have two road games in a row, you certainly don't want to draw Alabama from the West and travel to Tuscaloosa. And I have been to games at South Carolina Stadium. It is tough. It is really tough. So having those two back-to-back -back is not fun. Then they get to host Memphis, which is normally I would consider that a trap game after Alabama. But considering Memphis just beat UCLA this year, and I believe they have beaten... Power 5 teams three years in a row now, I believe, with their upset over UCLA this year. Uh, it's not going to be a trap game at all. I do think it's a little oddly placed for SEC schedules in the middle of October. But coming out of Alabama, that is not going to be an easy game at all. Then they got Kentucky, travel to the Swamp. They get Vanderbilt, travel to Knoxville, and then they host Arkansas, 
which is a game I wished was on a Friday. But as far as road games go, that is about as brutal of a schedule as you can get at a suddenly very interesting and offensively kind of scary Purdue team at South Carolina, at Alabama, at Florida, at Tennessee is your conference away schedule. The SEC schedule makers cut you absolutely no slack, Mizzou. Now let's cut to South Carolina. They will open the season at home against a Coastal Carolina team in their very first year of being bowl eligible. So that's exciting. Then they play a very early game against Georgia, which, you know, I think will really be a season-defining game for both programs. Then they get a home game against Marshall. Marshall, fun fact, has won the only meeting between these two in, I think they beat South Carolina in 1998, and then they came to Clemson the following year in Tommy Bowden's first game and beat him. So Marshall had back-to-back wins against South Carolina FBS teams at the time. So maybe South Carolina can even the series up there. They travel out to Vanderbilt, out to Kentucky, at home against Missouri, and then a home game against Texas A&M before a bye. And I like the bye because the next three SEC games are going to define the season. They have Tennessee at home. They travel out to Ole Miss, which right now that doesn't seem as daunting as it used to. But when you play an unfamiliar conference team on the road, weird things can happen. Then they go to the Swamp. They have a really weird schedule in that their four SEC road games are back-to-back. So you had Vanderbilt and Kentucky and then Ole Miss in Florida. Then they finish up at home against Chattanooga and then travel to Death Valley to take on Clemson. Next up is Tennessee. They open the season in Charlotte against West Virginia in a game that I think is going to be extraordinarily fun. Both of these teams play neutral site ACC teams to open this year, so it seems a little bit more of a round robin for them to play next year. Uh, this will be a really fun game in Charlotte. The The crowd should be pretty evenly split, and I think that more people will go to that than the NC State-South Carolina game this year because I think NC State and South Carolina are used to those kind of games in Charlotte. Tennessee and West Virginia are not, so that'll be a really fun crowd. Then they play ETSU, UTEP, home game against Florida in their traditional spot. Then they travel to Georgia, and then there's a bye week. I love this bye week for the Volunteers. They come out of that, they travel to Auburn, which, just like I said about South Carolina, road conference games against a division opponent you don't normally play in Auburn. That is going to be tough. Then, after Auburn, they come home to play Alabama, and it's actually on the third Saturday. That's amazing. I love when the name of the rivalry happens on the day of the rivalry. Then they travel out to South Carolina. So, those three games, right when they come back out of that bye, they need that bye right where it is. Then they play Charlotte to open November, which is kind of strange. Then they play Kentucky and Missouri at home, and then finish the season at Vanderbilt. Speaking of Vanderbilt, they open the season again against Middle Tennessee, this time at home. Then they have a home game against Nevada. And then they travel to Notre Dame. Look at Vanderbilt going out to South Bend. Get a home game against South Carolina and Tennessee State. Then the stretch that will define the season going into the bye week at Georgia, at home against Florida, at Kentucky, at Arkansas. Again, three away games within four weeks right before a bye is not fun. Then they come out of the bye and it's the other road game against Missouri. Then they finish up at home against Ole Miss and Tennessee. So a couple of final thoughts to kind of close this video out on. So far in the SEC schedule, I'm assuming some of these dates may end up being moved. But as of right now, no Thursday night games, no Friday night games for the SEC. And this past year, or you know, what just happened. They had a Sunday game when A&M went out to UCLA and a Labor Day game with Tennessee and Georgia Tech. Every single SEC game is on a Saturday right now except for one, and that was the Egg Bowl. No Thursday games, no Friday games, no Sunday games, no Labor Day games. Week one for the SEC East will be not the most eventful. You're going to have West Virginia, Tennessee, which is going to be a very exciting, very interesting game. And then Nothing else really exciting happens for the East. I have to admit, I'm a little interested to see conference play starting in Week 2. I know they've done it in the past, but usually you get three uh, non-conference games and then you try to stick that last non-conference game the week before the rivalry game, so the next to last week, Week 13 of the season. And some of these you know, games were kind of sprinkled in and around the season 
one to open up November, one in the third week of October. So you can see the SEC, and you'll see this in the West video too if you decide to watch that. The SEC is trying to kind of sprinkle in some of those non-conference opponents throughout the season instead of clogging them all at the very beginning or and putting one at the very end. For my money, based on the way it looks right now, which is about 11 months before the start of the season, I think Tennessee has the toughest schedule. They open up in a neutral side game against West Virginia, travel to Georgia, travel to Auburn, host Alabama, travel to South Carolina. That is not easy at all. I think they have the toughest schedule in the East. The easiest schedule might be Florida's. They will technically play two FCS teams. They do travel to Florida State, which is never easy, but they host South Carolina. They get Georgia on a neutral site. They host LSU. They travel to Tennessee and Mississippi State, but those seem at right now like very possibly winnable games. Mississippi State could be a little bit trickier depending on what happens to them the rest of this year going into next year. But I think Florida might have the easiest schedule in the East right now. But that's it for me, guys. Let me know down in the comments section what you think about the 2018 SEC East schedule. How difficult, you know, what is the team with the most difficult schedule who has the easiest? And what are the games, and what are the games that you are the most excited to see? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can click the circle right there in order to subscribe or watch any of the other videos over there to the right that YouTube has suggested for you. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, until next time. Before their bye week, then they get Georgia, play Missouri and South Carolina at home. Then they will play Idaho, which now will be an FCS team, technically. It'll be an FCS game since they're dropping down next year, and they'll be Florida's second FCS school of the year after playing Charleston Southern. And then they have the annual trip to Tallahassee or the annual matchup against Florida State this time traveling to Tallahassee in a row against the Kentucky Wildcats at the Swamp. Then they will host McIlwain's old team, Colorado State, before traveling three times in the next four weeks on the road. So at Tennessee, at Miss State, which will be interesting, be uh, Dan Mullen's old team. Home against LSU and then at Vanderbilt. Uh, so all three True SEC road games they have will be in the four weeks. New, roughly, their non-conference schedule. If you paid attention to specific schools, you probably already know who they were going to play out of conference. But now we have the official dates and arrangements and who plays who when and that we can look at the streaks. So I just want to take a quick glance over all of these teams, starting with the SEC East. So if you look at Florida's schedule, they start at home against Charleston Southern. They will try to get their 20th passy. If we take a look at Georgia's, they open up against Austin P. Then they travel to South Carolina, which is never easy. Play host to Middle Tennessee, travel to Missouri. Then they host Tennessee and Vanderbilt in back-to-back -back weeks before traveling to LSU, which is a really tough draw from the West. If you're going to have a team and you're going to have to play uh, an away game at LSU's, probably not the one you Hey lifers, Dustin here, and the SEC has just released the entire 2018 football schedule for all 14 of their member schools, so I figured in this video we would do a little bit of an interesting kind of quick glance over what the schedules look like for all the schools and kind of talk about it a little bit. Now we already knew who the conference teams these schools were playing. We also knew